Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you. I assume we'll have to answer your questions three. Fag. Oh, you're an internet troll. <laughs> Leave her alone! There's a lot of confusion, and there's also a lot of meanness. <laughs> to help release the crushing weight on my soul that is the haters of YouTube. Jesus have souls! Jesus do have souls! We need to assassinate Justin Bieber. Maybe that was a bit harsh. And I am deeply sorry for rickrolling you. I'm not really. I've got a kick out of it. But it does demonstrate a good example of YouTube's culture of provocation. Now, sending a video to someone is seemingly harmless. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, until you send a video like this to someone. Daywalkers are half ginger themselves. Make no mistake, ginger kids are evil. Do you know who is ginger? Judas. South Park would say that red-haired people don't have souls, okay? Because we do. We do have souls, alright? And lately I've been being called a ginger. A fat ginger. By everybody at school. If you understand YouTube as an eternal mashup, creative and originality expression engine, then you of course be able to predict what happens next. And I'm tired of it, okay? I like it done. But it really does really bad. Gingers do have souls! Alright? You're a god. You're a Christian. I go to church every day. You're a god. Ooh. <laughs> In the field of philosophy, the butterfly effect states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In simpler terms, a knock-on effect which will shape and change what we know today. So, say if I was to watch a video of Justin Bieber and I got annoyed. I may provoke some anger responses some other people have from their Bieber hating videos. when that sort of language is battered about, something serious has happened, or is about to happen. But on YouTube, a few video responses before the whole flame work gets taken down, and that's about it. I'll be concentrating this YouTube documentary on one of the most interesting and relevant cases of flame warring. I'm of course talking about Eric Douglas, and here's his story. <laughs> This video is an open declaration of war to all you freaks, you metal-loving A long time ago, in the autumn of 2010, a user called Eric Douglas appeared in the kingdom of YouTube, screaming insensitive and outrageous claims to the poor haters of Bieber. He didn't just stop at hating, but went on to threatening to hack YouTube users' accounts. We're gonna get your IP, and I can get this information. We're gonna, um, find out who you are, the users of the IP, um, where you live, and we're gonna get your photo, and we're gonna blast it on the internet. Of course, people responded. Anyway, how this whole war started is I just did a video response to this Eric kid. You know, basically all my campers went to his video and told him how much of a fucking retard he was. You know, Liet sent me. Life in a Tent sent me. Life in a Tent said you're full of shit. I hope you're listening to this, you Justin Bieber hating idiots, because you're finished, alright? Heed my word. And welcome, boys and girls, to a flame war in full effect. Uh, you're not probably not going to see this video, but if you do see this video, Mr. Douglas, um, I'm not sure if you're doing this for attention. I mean, it's, ob it's obvious that you're trolling, but you can't do what you're saying that you're gonna do on the internet and be safe. I just wanted to tell you one thing, and it is to the bottom of my heart. I, and really, I, it is to the bottom of my heart. I am just really, really 
so... I'm so sorry. For the fact that you're gonna fucking lose. Because you can't do shit to anybody. Now, Eric Douglas had been warned by users of the dangerous powers of angering the YouTube community. However, does Eric Douglas listen? Surprisingly, yes. I just want, I just want to, I just want to ask for some forgiveness for goodness sake. I just, okay guys, will you forgive me or not? I mean, look at me. I'm crying like on camera at like about a million people are probably going to watch this. Like, guys, I'm just asking for some forgiveness for goodness sake. Just give it to me. I, you know, this is my account for goodness sake. If you're not going to forgive me, stop like harassing me and shit. Because, you know, it just gets, it gets me for goodness sake. I mean, you think it's all fun and jokes, so it's not fun and jokes when you have people, like, giving you death threats. And thus ends the illustrious tale of Eric Douglas, the YouTube user who took it too far and subsequently faced the consequences. The end. Now, Eric Douglas did make videos after my apology, but I'm just focusing on the ones surrounding his views on Bieber haters. As Life in a Tent points out... Me and Eric were live on tinychat.com inside my chat room where he actually showed up and started to hack me. Now one thing that you probably didn't see, and I hope I can find a video of this, was Eric and his disturbed behavior. Troll or not, this guy has a problem. When people were calling him a troll, he decided to go ahead and throw a fit. He was throwing things around his room and screaming like the devil himself. He kind of reminded me of a child that wasn't getting any love. I'm not sure what his father does to him. I'm not sure what his parents do. I'm not sure if he's abused. But that made me think of something. To the fact that Eric may have a serious problem. And very disturbed in the head. So of course he's going to go ahead and pick on YouTube partners. But like all people on YouTube and all people in the world, we have haters. YouTube is like a community, like a school or a city. That's how I see it. Not everyone is going to like you. So consider this war pretty much over unless Eric decides to do something. Possibly one of the most controversial and influential YouTube wars, it's interesting to see how a war gets started. Now what are the contributing factors? <music> Eric Douglas's rise to fame can be contributed to a number of factors. Ranting about Justin Bieber, perhaps one of the most controversial figures on YouTube, threatening so viciously and personally, and looking so ridiculous whilst doing it poll of YouTube users has produced these results. This quite sizable section of the chart shows that a good 70% of the YouTube users asked have received animosity from other YouTube users, which brings to the conclusion that most YouTube users are calm and passive, and it's a very small percentage which antagonise the YouTube community. As the Eric Douglas Flamore incident gained popularity, more and more videos were made about the incident. You're gonna end up in a very bad situation. You're already in a bad situation, and um, you you really just need to delete your account and just move on from this, because I promise you, buddy, it's not gonna end well. K Six Faces has either two motivations behind posting this video. A, he's hoping to deter troll Eric Douglas from continuing to flame more and try to help the user, or B. He's hoping to gain recognition himself from being the voice of reason in a flame war incident and also receive more views on his videos. The incident of Eric Douglas has only just happened, which will mean that when people search for Eric Douglas, they will more than likely come across K6 Faces videos about Eric Douglas, which will give him more views and notoriety. People profiting of provoking actions as to the idea that YouTube feeds of its own negativity. By having one video uploaded to a flame war, it leads the way for opportunistic YouTubers to step into the five minute spotlight and also increase the infamy of such users like Eric Douglas. There is a culture of provocation surrounding the most controversial videos on YouTube, such as a vlog about Christianity or a passionate cry of admiration for a certain teen idol. In some cases, it can be a genuine YouTuber being innocent and stating their opinion. However, in some cases, the shoe can be on the other foot. Josh YouTube Uber is evidence of a new species of troll. A cannibal troll. A troll that spends its time troll baiting other trolls, wasting the time of those most intent on wasting the time of others. Does this mean that Eric Douglas was a troll himself? And that he was just playing the YouTube community, trying to antagonize responses from gullible YouTube users? Yes, no, maybe. In truth, it's unlikely we will ever know. But one thing is for certain, that one video can spark an entire flame war into life, making that user infamous. Users take ample advantage of the option to comment on uploaded material. In some cases, 
and not always in direct proportion to the number of views, clips may provoke tens of thousands of reactions. Sometimes mere statements of approval or disapproval. In many cases, just a simple LOL or WTF. There are many YouTube users who act passively towards each other, and sometimes friendly. But there is a small percentage which are there to annoy and antagonise other YouTube users, mainly because they think it's fun. This culture of provocation can usually only be accessed if you're looking for it, however. Now, if you carry on watching your funny cat videos, I'm sure you'll be fine. However, I'm going to leave you with this quote from blogger It's a Miracle. I've learnt a lot about internet society in the past few days. There are far too many disgustingly cruel people who love to be hateful when we have the chance to be anonymous. <laughs> and I just love to watch. I'm Duncan McLeod, and this has been A Culture of Provocation. Damn, I'm going to have to do that line again. Oh, poopy mother...